Hello, Pastor Doug, back again with another Bible Brief. Today I want to take a look at Esther chapter 4, verse 14. But before we go there, quick word about Esther, because there's something unique about this book. This is the only book in the Bible that clearly doesn't directly mention God. There's some debate about the Song of Songs in chapter 8, I believe it is, depending on how you translate a verse, whether the Song of Songs directly mentions God. But Esther is the one book in the Bible that clearly doesn't mention God by name. Now, why? Well, clearly it's not an atheistic book. I mean, this is not saying that God doesn't exist. And we read it, for example, in Esther chapter 4, verse 3, In each and every province where the commanded decree of the king came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay on sackcloth and ashes. King Xerxes has been tricked that if the Jews do not engage in a false pagan practice, they will be killed. And so, therefore, the Jews respond in fasting, weeping, and wailing, which, as you read through the Old Testament, is religious practices. You fast unto the Lord. So, this is not saying that God doesn't exist. However, Let's go to our verse today, uh, Esther 4, 14, it reads, For if you, this is Mordecai speaking, a, f a faithful Jew, remain silent at this time, talking to Queen Esther, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this. What a beautiful verse. Now, in one broad sense, it can be viewed as prophetic. It's like, look, Queen Esther, if you think that just because you're a queen, you'll escape judgment, no, you will not. Death will come upon you because you are a Jew. However, as Mordecai encourages Esther to do this good work, he also trusts in God because deliverance will come from some place. And I love how the book of Esther puts it, because it's almost as if it's from a human perspective. You know, we, you could have had the beginning of this book saying, and God has ordained salvation for the Jews, and it will use Esther, which, of course, we with hindsight know, that, know this. But as you read through Esther, you're kind of put into the story from a human perspective looking up. And so Mordecai is not going to say, I know for certain that God has chosen you to save the Jewish people. He doesn't say that because he hasn't received a revelation from God. However, he is trusting in God that God will work things out because God has promised good to his old covenant people. And so this is this wonderful balance. There's an opportunity here. Mordecai encourages Esther to do what is right. There's a broad sense of prophecy that, you know, the king's decree will come for you, Esther. But there's also a trust in the Lord. We may not know the exact details of how the future is going to work out, but we do know the big picture. We know that Christ has defeated death on the cross and he will return and God has promised good to his people. Therefore, as Christians, we go through this life and we trust in the promises of God. Various things pop up that appear to us, and we are called to respond in faith. But as we respond in faith, we may not know the particulars, but again, we know the big picture. Well, I hope that helps. As always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.